Welcome back to another Mission Models uh, painting tutorial. Uh, today we are focusing on the Rubicon Models M4 composite uh, Sherman. Uh, this kit can also be built as the uh, Firefly uh, hybrid. Um, we will not be going through the workflow. This is going to be a straightforward painting basic painting tutorial to show you how we do it uh, for further mixing ratios uh, and, and uh, technical instruction. Uh, please refer to our other previous uh, videos, uh, for example, the uh, workflow tutorials. Tutorials. So let's get uh, started. All right, so we have our M4 Sherman here. This is a 156 scale or 28 millimeters. Uh, it's a, you know, war gaming, a tabletop war gaming piece for uh, the bolt action style games. Um, but these can also be built as uh, static display models. The detail's great. Um, on this particular model, we did not glue our, our tracks and suspension on so we can paint them separately. So we've got our upper hull here. Um, so let's get started. We are starting out with uh, Mission Models Tan Primer, uh, which is MMS006. Uh, tan is always the perfect color for a top coat of uh, olive drab. So we're gonna get started here. We are using our uh, Harder Steenbeck Evolution. And we're spraying between about 10 and 15 PSI. Like we always say, test before you, you spray. Make sure that your ratios are good and uh, let's get going. Nice, even coats. Just a quick prime. Just make sure you cover the model. Nice, light, wet coats, as we always say. And, uh, you know, this is just going to be a quick painting tutorial and we're just going to want to kind of let this dry off to the side okay and we'll just make sure to get nice solid coverage there as well and again we're using tan primer mission models MMS 006 and we'll Fill the airbrush up again, just real quick. That's probably too much primer uh, for just this uh, track section. But if you have other models in the series that you want to paint, you've got plenty of primer. Again, nice light wet coats and just let it dry. It'll be dry in about 20 minutes or you can accelerate the drying time with uh, some cold air. So it's dry to the touch. Okay, so we've been letting our Sherman dry off to the side. We've used tan primer here, and tan is great because it's a neutral color. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot of yellows and, and things like that in there, so it's a, it's a, it's a perfect uh, base coat um, when you're using a top coat of olive drab, which also has tans, yellows, things like browns uh, in it. So it's, a, it's an excellent complement. It's not dark, it's not too light. Um, it gives a nice uh, contrast uh, uh, you know, to, your, to your top coat. Anyhow, we've got our suspension and tracks and our upper hull. Our next step is we're going to take Mission Models uh, MMP040 Tire Black. We've already mixed up the paint and we're going to put in our airbrush and there's a reason why we're doing this. Okay, now always test before you shoot the model, make sure your spray pattern and your paint consistency is good. Uh, we're going to we're going to spray the tires. And we're doing this in advance. So our tires are done. Flip it over the back side. All right. And we're spraying about 10 to 15 psi. basically putting the tires and we can hit the tracks a little bit too but we're gonna go back in a little bit later and actually do the tracks so and I'm gonna wash my hands I should have been using a something to hold the part with but I forgot so anyway so we've got our 
essentially have our tires uh, base coated in tire black. And our next step is to start doing our uh, olive drab base coats. And we're using uh, MMP uh, number 25, which is US Army olive drab. So again, like we always say, test before you uh, actually start spraying the model. Make sure your, uh, uh, your spray pattern and your mixing ratios are correct and to your liking. So let's get going here. Spraying at about 10 to 15 PSI. Nice, even, methodical passes, about two to three inches from the work. It's not necessary to try and cover everything in one pass. And just pay attention to what you're doing. And we are going fast, so we don't end up with a extremely long video because this is not a workflow video. This is basically a painting tutorial to show you how efficiently you can paint your models. And we're just gonna kind of give it one more quick dusting. We remove the turret, get underneath there. So if you happen to turn the turret, you don't have any uh, voids or unpainted surfaces. Make sure to get the underside underneath the barrel there. And that should do it for the moment. We're going to, uh, again, we're going to let this dry, but our next step will doing, be doing the, uh, uh, the track assemblies. Okay, so we are letting our uh, Sherman turret and uh, uh, main hull uh, dry off to the side and we're gonna move on here uh, to our uh, track assemblies. We've taken out a different airbrush. We're using a harder Steenbeck uh, Infinity with a .15 needle nozzle and we're gonna start doing our road wheels and suspension and uh, we're using the same color which is a MMP uh, number 25 US Army olive drab. Um, like we always say, test before you actually spray the model. And we're going to show you how you can just quickly do your road wheels. Minimal effort. And Mission Models paint is extremely opaque. So it'll cover our tire black. And you can see now why we did the tire black first then we essentially have our tires painted in advance. Just take your time. We're going pretty quickly here. And as your wheels are drying, you can then just go in and do, essentially do your suspension. and then go back for some follow-up coats. But you can see the way we're doing this, really how quickly, essentially, you can move along. So we're gonna let this one dry. We're gonna pull the, uh, the next one out. All right, just a little bit of, start in the center and Pull back till you get the rim of the wheel. And it's okay if you get OD on the tires because we will do a very quick cleanup on that to refine our tire and wheel section. Very quick. And then just repeat until you have nice solid coverage and if you're going to do any weathering it's fine you just don't want to go too heavy you don't want to start pooling up the paint but even if you do by accident just leave it alone 
it will self-level and it'll be absolutely fine. All right, so let's bring back the other one. Naturally, it's gonna be a little darker at first because uh, we have a darker base underneath, which is the tire black. So just exercise control. If it's one of the first times that you've uh, done this, just practice. It's all it takes, a little bit of practice or a lot of practice, or as much as you can squeeze in. And then just keep building up your color layers until you're satisfied. We're again, we're spraying it about 10 to 15 PSI. Nice light air pressure. Again, this might take a couple coats. But it's also the proper way to uh, actually paint rather than trying to just cover in one pass and you'll get the best you get the best finish. And don't forget, you know, on the actual vehicle, you'll have more shadows around the suspension, the road wheels and so forth and it'll be lighter towards the top of the hull where the sunlight hits. Alrighty, so here we are and we've uh, basically let everything dry uh, for the most part. Now at the rate we're going, the paint is not technically uh, and 100% cured, so it, it, it is a little bit soft because we are going very, very fast. Your typical uh, drawing time is, uh, let's just say, you know, three to, you know, 12 hours overnight is always usually best uh, to be, you know, properly and, and, and chemically and technically cured 100% for maximum durability. But we're moving along here. Everything's dry to the touch, so we can uh, keep on going. You can do the same thing, just be, just beware. Anyway, so our next step is we're going to start adding some faded colors. Uh, we're starting with uh, MMP number 020, U.S. Army uh, Olive Drab Faded number 1. All right. So, again, we are using the uh, Harder Steam Back Infinity with a .15 needle nozzle. So let's, uh, let's get started here. Now, sunlight's going to hit the top of the, uh, the vehicle before it hits the, uh, the lower surfaces. It's usually darker at the bottom, the shadows, sunlight, and so forth. So what we're doing is we're fading in some of the uh, faded olive drab here. Give it a nice faded look. Now it's going to be subtle. Faded olive drab is definitely lighter than our base coat. So even though it doesn't look like something is happening, our paint is very, very opaque. And as it dries, you will start to see the change. Just the light. Use your best judgment. Some of the high spots here. It's gonna be subtle, it's gonna look great. Let's get the top of the barrel. Fade in a little here. So you wanna have a nice kinda of bleached worn out effect. And you can always, if you feel like you've uh, applied too much, you can always go in and 
correct that with darker shades. There's quite a few different faded versions of all the drab. So we also suggest using your gut instinct as well. You can always look at reference material and so forth. Top of the mantlet here. Glacis plate. I get a little bit of a streaking effect. And hopefully you can see what's going on. You don't want it to look like patchwork. I want to try and get as much of a natural look as possible. Okay, so let's move on over here. Grabbed our, our suspension, and we'll just add a little bit of contrast in. And though we did say it could be a little darker down here, but we're doing it anyways. alternate some of the wheels, give a little bit of variation. Good. And the more you'll fly in light, feathered, coats, the more you'll start to see change. You can see how quickly we can do this. Let's get the back end a little bit. And we could have painted all of our own vehicle tools first, but I guess we didn't, but we will. Your engine deck. Some of this cheek armor. So now you're getting some nice variation in tonality. Just be sure not to cover all of your base coat. Just feather it in. We'll start to blend together. It's starting to look pretty good. Make some things stand out a bit. All right, so let's let this dry off to the side and uh, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're back here again, and our next step is we're gonna start working on our uh, tracks, okay? And uh, then we'll be uh, painting some of the uh, on-vehicle uh, equipment. So we're gonna move uh, these, uh, this upper hull off to the side uh, so we don't have any accidents, let it dry. We're gonna use Mission Models uh, uh, Cold Rolled Steel, that's uh, MMM002 Cold Rolled Steel. And again, we're using uh, the same airbrush, Harder Steenbeck Infinity uh, with a 0.15 needle nozzle. And again, always test before you spray. Get some nice fine lines if you want. So here we go. We're gonna airbrush our tracks. Let's get started. And again, like we said before, all right, we're gonna, we're gonna this whole, you know, clip on here so I don't spray my hands as usual. And we'll start to fade in some of our cold rolled steel. Again, we're going fast. Take your time. Get the edges of the tracks there.
get a nice fine spray pattern there so you can uh, paint everything without getting a lot of overspray. So let's let uh, this dry off to the side and we'll do the next one. All right. Don't try and cover everything in one pass. Much, much better results in multiple passes. And then we'll go in and we'll do all the track pads as well. Same method. Show you how quickly we can do that. Do this almost this entire model with an airbrush. Go from the back side. I believe these uh, are rubber pads on there, so we'll do that as well. And we'll use uh, tire black for the pads. All right, so basically there's our tracks. I wanna let that dry. So we'll just let that dry off to the side. And we're gonna clean the airbrush, we'll be right back, and we'll paint some on vehicle equipment. Okay, so we've sprayed our tracks, and now uh, what we've done is we've, again, taken our uh, cold rolled steel, uh, number uh, MMM002, and we, uh, uh, put a drop of paint on the bottom of an epoxy mixing cup as a wet palette, and we are going to uh, paint uh, our machine gun real quick. And we've already painted the 50 cal that'll go on later. We just forgot to show it. Fix that up a little later, if it is indeed OD. But there's a lot of different ways to uh, take care of that if we're wrong. We're not going off of any kind of reference here. Just going from what memory serves. And we can easily refine this a bit. Take your time. We can do various washes later to fix anything up. further weathering so we put another drop uh, on a pallet on the same epoxy cup that we had used previously just don't mix your your uh, cold rolled steel that you had there with the brown and get in there and get the X 
sandal. If you get any overages, you can easily, easily just go back and touch it up. Not a big deal. All right, so essentially there's our tools. And Part of the handle would be wood or metal or I don't know, but it's wood now. All right, looks good. Let's let it dry. So our next step is going to be decals, and what we're going to use next is uh, the Mission Models uh, MMA005 semi-gloss clear coat. Now you can decal right over the paint without a gloss clear. Uh, we don't recommend. Um, regular gloss we we typically recommend a semi um, so we're just going to spray in the areas where we're going to decal uh, again we have the uh, clear coat uh, in the airbrush already and we're going to test before we hit the model and some nice light coats just in the areas that you're actually going to apply the decals you don't have to cover the whole thing just in these areas. And I believe that should be it. Now, you really want to let your clear coats dry, but we're going to uh, since we're moving along fast, we're just gonna go for it. So, all right, so we've got our semi-gloss on there. We'll let that dry and uh, we'll, add, uh, we'll add the decals. So, give us a few minutes. Okay, so our Sherman uh, upper hull is off drying to the side with our semi-gloss clear coat. And while that's actually drying, we are going to do a wash here and clean up our road wheels um, so we can stay efficient and uh, keep moving along here. Again, if you want to know about making washes, you can see our other uh, workflow tutorials which and, and various other videos that discuss washes. Uh, we are using, again, uh, number uh, 040 Tire Black to do this, and this is where we're going to kind of clean up our, our uh, road wheels. This is a pure water-based acrylic wash, just like the rest of Mission Models uh, paint, which is all acrylic, water-based. Uh, you can officially make your washes. You don't need to use any kind of, you know, enamels or toxic chemicals to do the washes. The washes will flow just like an oil, and uh, you can just watch it flow quick and easy and we'll be doing more washes and so forth on the upper hull uh, after we do our, our decals. So we might as well, while that's drying, just take advantage of, of uh, quote unquote uh, downtime of uh, you know other parts, but you can see it flowing. You can build up the washes um, and make them as opaque as you want. You can uh, also adjust your washes accordingly. One thing we can do is take, again, we can take an epoxy mixing cup or just whatever you might have laying around, uh, put a drop of uh, your chosen color. If you want to pick up a little bit more pigment, rather than adjusting your wash, you can just dip your brush into, uh, into your uh, drop of paint over here and then back into the wash just to make it a little bit more dense will dry quickly. It's going to give you a great look. And you just see it flowing just like that. And we'll also be doing some basic weathering towards the end after we get our decals on. Again, this is about using your best judgment. We can't do it for you. We can show you how to do it. So these are your 
basic principles. Let's get our, make sure we get some of these uh, rubber rollers up here. And remember, you're gonna get a lot of road grime and so forth. It doesn't have to be, you know, perfect. I mean, perfect is always good, but you know, just depends on the look you're going for. Now we can take our, again, we can take our wash and we can start touching some of the various suspension parts watch it flow right in there and again just adjust accordingly you can make a wash out of any color just because it says North African dust on the bottle doesn't mean that's what it is you can use all sorts of different Tans, browns, blacks, whatever you find to be suitable when it comes to weathering colors. You can just see it flow right in there. Just get a little bit in our sprockets. Add a little, just a little bit of depth. You don't want to go real heavy. You don't want to turn your your model black. We like to. We always say that we like to use tire black because it's a nice neutral color it's perfect for any type of uh, as a wash over any type of color because our tire black is not just straight black it's got browns and greens and it's more of a kind of a rubbery sort of color so just start adding a little bit in there you don't have to use an extra drop of paint on the side by any means. We're just showing you what you can do. Various options. So you see it, just kind of capillary action. And you can go in and manipulate and adjust the washes. If there's any overages, anything that you don't like, you can go back and uh, just adjust it. So essentially we're just adding depth and a little bit of dimension to it. Uh, this is a good time also. We can just start touching some of the, uh, the bolt heads and so forth, or the pins I should say, track pins. Kind of go in here. We, use, we like to use just a finer brush for this kind of thing. We don't like to cover the entire model in our wash because then it's going to make your entire model dark. And then just, just go back, and just go back into the road wheels again. Just depends on the look you're going for. We're just showing you the basic uh, principles. And again, you can just just accordingly you want it to, you want your washes to be subtle again get those the bolts axles just touch it quickly and lightly and even though may not look like, we always say, it may not look like anything's happening, but it is. Down there, in your road wheels, just a little bit, just light, it doesn't need to be real dark. You don't want to turn it, you don't want it to look cartoonish and overdone. You want to try and get a nice uh, scale appearance. Less is more. So we are going to let this 
The washes dry quickly, but we're gonna let this dry off to the side and we're going to then grab our upper hull and do a, a quick decal job so then we can get to some final weathering and wrap this up. I'm trying to keep this video quick because our other ones are, our other workflow videos are, are pretty long, but there's a reason for that. So, all right, that's looking pretty good. So we're gonna leave it alone, we'll let it dry, and we're gonna grab our Sherman hull, and we'll start, we'll move on to decals. All right, so we've got our tracks and whatnot uh, drawing off to the side. We've got, we've grabbed our Sherman hull. You can see the uh, semi-gloss uh, where we shot that earlier in preparation uh, for decals. Uh, we've got our floaters here, and we're just gonna put them over here. Carefully. We've got our decals here. And we have a little uh, cotton swab. We're going to use our favorite micro set, Microsol. We always use it. The clear coats are chemically impervious to all uh, setting solutions and so forth. So, what we're going to do is just going to take a little bit here, pick up our decal kind of blot off the excess water. All right. right now, but I think we can. All right. All right. All right. So we've got our decals applied and uh, we let them dry again. We're going pretty fast here. Uh, we applied our uh, semi-gloss, our decals, so forth. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back in with the sem same semi-gloss that we used previously just to seal them in. All right. That way you won't have any silvering. Just seal them in. You know, supply the clear where the decal is. You don't have to go overboard. You don't have to cover the entire model. All right. So now what we're going to do uh, briefly is we are going to take MMA 004 flat clear coat and uh, we're going to cancel out. Uh, any of the uh, the semi that's on there. Uh, we've already got the the, uh, the flat in the airbrush and basically the way you want to do this is you want to dust it on in light coats. That's how you apply it. Okay, just dust it on to cancel out any of that that semi. Let each coat of flat dry. If you go on too heavy you will end up again with flat. I mean with the, the semi-gloss because you're applying too much resin and carrier. So the flat coat, you want to dust it on in light layers and then just let each one dry and you can end up going dead flat. So just be cautious on how flat you really want to go. But again, you just want to dust it on. It will not turn chalky on you. And as it dries, it'll just continue to do its thing. So again, just from a distance, that's all you gotta do. Okay, so we're back and we've applied our uh, our flat coat uh, over our, well, here's what we did. We did a semi-gloss, we put the decals on, we sealed the decals with the semi-gloss, and then we hit it with our uh, with the flat coat, uh, MMA004, in light dusted coats. Let each light dusted coat dry, and uh, it'll work exactly uh, as intended, okay? So, the next thing that we're gonna do is uh, we are going to do some aluminum highlights on our tracks. What I like to do is uh, just put a drop to the side, put my finger in there. And I always say because I get more of a direct feel and just hit some of the the high spots. All right, you just wanna kinda do this lightly. 
just trying to get a slight accent. You know, it's, you know, you don't want to, you don't want it to be glaring. You always say that hit some of the sprockets, you know, the sprocket there. So we're just kind of highlighting the tracks. Um, you want it, like I said, you want it to be uh, subtle. And then we'll cancel some of that out again with, uh, you know, tire black. You can hit some of the, uh, you know, the bolt heads here. You can also make aluminum washes and various things like that. But because we're going fast and it's a process, we are gonna skip the washes. All right. Any high bright spots, you can you can just uh, you, know, you, can, you can fix that up real quick. All right, so just tone it down just a tad. Like I said the finger just kind of using your finger, your pinky just kind of gives you a nice kind of direct feel. And you know we don't we don't like to dry brush anything at all. I wouldn't even necessarily consider this to be you know dry brushing. Get your sprockets, pins, various things like that. Just light, just light, right? Maybe just a little bit on the top of the barrel. Highlight. Our tool holders, just light, light. Don't go overboard. Just be cautious. We have our machine gun, which we had painted off to the side. Just add a little, little, slight amount of wear. And while we're while we're at it, what we're gonna do is paint something that we, we had missed. Take our brush here, just kind of add a little detail to the to the uh, gun mount, just real quick. So many little things to remember. same time we'll again take our Japanese propeller brown probably use a lot of different browns and whatnot but maybe uh, just get the, uh, the grips there all right so you can't really see it on the camera but we're just gonna put it aside for later Whoops. And uh, a little bit more aluminum. Some highlights. And all this can be toned back down a little bit gun here and uh, cold rolled steel again which we spot that we forgot there we go alrighty so we are moving along quickly We'll start uh, adding a little bit more again in washes just briefly. We'll do a few different types of washes. We're going back with our, our tire black, same wash that we used before. Right. And you'll see that we had some highlights here. So we're gonna tone down those, the aluminum highlights because we really don't want them glaring, but 
that will start to show through your tire black wash. So we're basically doing layers. All right, so this will all show through. This is where we can start to tone down any of the aluminum, blend it together, tie it all in. Anything that's you feel is a bit much. All right. Start. Okay, and you can adjust your washes accordingly to your needs. It's not a big deal. wider brush here into the wash, add a little depth to our tracks. Because this is a water, wider, broader area, it's all right. those dry and uh, now we're gonna start moving on doing some of the other washes and you know other areas just real quick and just take your time and you can see by not covering the entire model in a sludge wash, you have a lot more control, a lot less cleanup in the end. You just go around and methodically sort of touch certain areas. And we're gonna, the last step will be to uh, again blend and tie everything together with various, our various base coat very lightly you know we could take this model really really far all sorts of uh, can do all sorts of uh, you know fuel streaking and things like that we let all this dry now our paint again as we had mentioned before is not a hundred percent technically chemically cured so you want to when you're going this fast you just you just want to be cautious and careful that you don't start re-wetting your your paint or your base coats I should say all right so you're getting the you should get the idea here of, of, of what we're doing And we're just gonna kind of we're gonna move on into our next uh, next steps like we said you can just take it as far as as you want the sky is really the limit just you know just take your time that's all there is to it Okay, so uh, off camera, we had uh, glued our tracks on. So, you know, basically it's a uh, Sherman tank. Looks like a Sherman tank. So we've uh, taken some of our, uh, the faded uh, OD that we had used previously. And we are just going to go in here and just carefully just kind of fade things in and out a little bit. tone down some washes add a little more fading in there a little bit carefully again we're going very fast so
tone down a little bit of that uh, metallic on the gun barrel. Careful of your, your decals. And I'm kind of, like I mentioned uh, earlier, kind of toning down some of the, the wash. You know, we could easily manipulate these washes, remove them, remove anything that we don't like. A little streaking there, a little additional. Slight highlights, but again, we got we have one more step that we're gonna do. Yeah, it's looking good. All right, so just always kind of Spin it around. See if there's anything you gotta, you wanna take care of. All right, so basically this is our Sherman tank. We've got uh, one last step. Uh, we're gonna use uh, uh, MMW006 transparent dust. And we've uh, actually thinned this down uh, to more of a transparency uh, using uh, mission models thinner. So it's uh, not straight from the bottle. Always test before you spray. And we wanna, we've thinned it down because we wanna be subtle. All right. And just remember you're, you're gonna have more dust and dirt towards the bottom side where the running gear is. And just, but be cautious. Less is always more and lightly, lightly build up. Take your time, think about it. You know, if you're, if you're wondering, you can always look at reference and so forth. Could check your environment go look at you know trucks construction equipment photos online see how the dust will or grime or whatever will start to uh, kind of build up go a little heavier towards the bottom kind of fade up as you move along good idea to let things dry so you have an, a more of an idea of where your finish stands gonna get down the lower hull just go light careful because you can easily and quickly overdo it you can always fix it if you do if you're ever in doubt just test on the side Like we were saying before, you know, kind of pay attention where dust, grime, dirt will accumulate. And how it builds up. Now we could take this really far, but the whole idea, again, 
Here's a quick tutorial. But now it's up to you to create your style and signature. See, because we always say we could go for hours. Tone down our markings a bit. They do they do see wear and tear. Alright, so here we've got our Rubicon models, 56 scale or 28 millimeter M4 composite uh, Sherman tank. Alright. And we've taken you through the basic steps. You can always check uh, our other videos and our website for in-depth tech, mixing ratios, and so forth. The point of this video was to show you how to, how quickly you can paint and what you can do with just an airbrush and a uh, paintbrush for some smaller details. We always recommend taking your time, even though we were moving uh, quite fast here, but the whole idea is to use your best judgment, patience, practice, and create your own signature and style um, you know, determination and persistence, and again, just practice, 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 learning new te techniques and creating your own, you know, your own style and signature on the, uh, the gaming table or the model contest and so forth. But, uh, you know, again, here it is. We're very happy with it. If we weren't making a video, uh, we could probably do this model in, I don't know, maybe 30 minutes, give or take, 40 minutes. Just depends on how fast you want to go. Anyhow, we have more videos coming, and um, we're not sure what they're going to be. There'll be more gaming pieces, similar scale, and so forth. Um, but you can apply some of our other techniques uh, from other videos into your game pieces. So, again, thanks for joining us. It was great working with you, and look forward to uh, seeing you again. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.